Welcome back to the channel. We're here once again with our Dell 3880, which for 2021, and it looks like 2022 as well, was the cheapest desktop PC I could buy from Dell, like a normal-ish case size. And when I say the cheapest one, I mean this specific model. It was stripped all the way down. I have slowly gone through it and upgraded everything. And there is a playlist for all those activities, which I will link right up there for you, as well as down in the description. So you can go get all caught up if you want. And as I enter the tail end of this series, where I've kind of done everything I can do with one, Dell has managed to surprise me with a couple things. One, since I bought this thing, there have been other iterations of it that have come along with slight deviations and features. 3891 is kind of a mild variation on this thing. I think now there's a Vostro that is basically this thing, and there's some other models that are basically this thing, and they all have little tiny things different. And it also seems that each retailer sometimes gets like their own version of these things, however they want to order them. And to my disappointment, Dell is now producing a version of this thing that comes with only a 256 six gig SSD and no hard drive. Also to my disappointment, I found that HP and other companies are also doing this and it's just stupid. 256 gigs is basically nothing. I'm kind of a music guy and just my digital audio collection is more than 256 gigs. So while I can kind of forgive them for offering a hard drive only version, which this thing was at the time I bought it, at least it was a one terabyte drive. Giving someone a quarter terabyte SSD is just and it seems a lot of folks out there don't understand or don't appreciate the difference between an SSD and a hard drive. And they just automatically think an SSD is better, which in some ways it is, some ways it isn't. So what ends up happening is we have folks that wanna just buy a big SSD and it's kind of an issue to just upgrade to a larger M2 SSD in one of these because there's only one slot. Copying stuff off becomes a problem, although there are ways to do that and I will be covering a way to do that on my tech channel linked above. And it also seems a lot of those folks don't understand that you can even add a hard drive to this thing and use it in like the 10 years ago way people use SSDs. Meaning that you would have a fairly small SSD for your applications and operating system and then like a big hard drive for all your stuff. So you have the speed of the SSD where it matters and then the size of a hard drive where it matters and you get the best of both worlds. So what we're gonna do today is just put a hard drive in this thing. So we're just gonna pretend it came with an SSD only with no hard drive. And through the whole playlist, I've kind of made videos that address that, like the hard drive mounting five ways video addresses that. But in this video, I'm gonna keep it hopefully a little bit more concise and I'm gonna take you through the whole operation. So physical installation as well as software initialization to get the thing online and going. Just kind of in one little happy place. So now there really isn't much more to it than to do it. So now I think the next thing to do is spend just a couple of moments talking about the hard drives themselves. And the short and sweet version of some absolute basics here is there are essentially two different sizes of hard drive in the world, three and a half inch, two and a half inch. You can put either one inside this PC. Two and a half inch requires an adapter, which is probably like $10. This is a drive I happen to buy for another laptop of mine that I wanna migrate some data to off of some USB drives and stuff. And I'm gonna use my 3880 as a mule to do that. So I'm going to just initialize this in the 3880. So in other words, I'm gonna put this one in it today. Installing this guy is actually modestly easier, but I will demonstrate as we go just so if you want to do one or the other, you can. I will also link uh, what I feel to be a drive of appropriate size and value down in the description, and it will probably be a three and a half inch drive. If you have one of these from an old computer or whatever and you want to use, hey, you can do that too. And if it is not a brand new drive, you won't have to do anything to it probably for it to work. Just plug it in and it'll go. And the only other snagamaroo we're gonna have is these days, this stuff doesn't come with screws when you buy it anymore. So you might have to get yourself a hardware kit too. 99% of the time anyway. So I will also link that for you. As far as mechanical installation, it doesn't get much easier than this. We just need to take our case side off and the heads of these captive screws are cut for a Phillips screwdriver, which you may need. If you have never done this before, they get kind of tight from the factory. Then you just pull it back and it'll kind of shimmy off the side. To reinstall it, there are tabs in the top of the case side that engage with windows at the top of the case. You just align the tabs to the windows, kind of push it back on, push it forward, tighten your thumb screws down, and you're done. Once you are in, the hard drive bay is actually right up here. And I've heard from people who got machines that did not come with a hard drive that their machine came with a SATA cord for it anyway, right off of that blue port over to here. And that blue port is the one you're gonna wanna use. Since I don't know how Dell is gonna ship every single one of these, I am going to assume that you don't have your own SATA cord. So I will also link that down in the description for you. You will have power available for it right here. So just this black plug here is all you're gonna need. And then to access the bay itself, we're going to need to remove the front plastic bezel, which just has these three retaining tabs that you just 
lift and then it just kind of hinges off the front. And just like the side cover, it's just a tab and window situation. So when you go to put it back on, just engage the tabs in the windows and lay it back and it'll snap back on. And here is my two and a half inch drive inside of a dual three and a half inch drive adapter bracket. I will also link this for you. And I also forgot if you're using a two and a half inch drive, you're gonna need a laptop screw kit or you could just go to the hardware store, I guess. You're gonna need some M3 by three screws to actually mount the drive into the bracket. This is the SATA cable that was included with my Dell. If you have one of these, feel free to use it, but do note, this is what is called a left hand 90 degree cord or a SATA left cable. So you can see the little engagement flag is pointing to my left. That is not normal of these. It is a specific Dell only thing, which is fine. Just make sure you mount your drive in your bracket such that this cable will actually plug in when you're done, yeah, just like that. Since I am assuming that you don't have the data cable, here is just a round SATA cable that I bought on Amazon. And it just plugs in there just like that too. And it's just a straight, but since it's standing off, it should not be a problem. And this also has a locking tab on it, which is kind of nice. Just push down, that releases. On a three and a half inch hard drive, the clearance is a little bit tighter to the case, which is why Dell uses that 90 because the drive actually installs like that. So just be mindful when you're installing your drive that you're not putting a lot of undue pressure here. This fancy round cable has this kind of round bump out right there, which makes it extra thick. Regular flat SATA cables aren't like that. So you may be better off to use a flat one if you're gonna put a three and a half inch drive in. And just to show you that, there the three and a half inch drive is, and it's lined up with the four mounting screw holes in the front of it. And those are 632 screws. And as I've said, I'm not going to permanently install this drive, so we're just going to eyeball it. And with this particular drive and this particular cable, there is no issue on the front of the case right there. So we would be all good to do that. So now my move is just going to be to slip my hard drive on its bracket in here. And since I've had the power supply wires and stuff in and out of this thing a million times, I'm kind of having to fight with those. But I'm going to assume that you won't have done that, so you won't have to. Then I just need to get the holes lined up. One screw. And for me, since this is all just temporary, I'm just going to use two screws here. Uh, truth be told, if not for this video, I would not even bolt it down. I would just have it in there, like laying on a washcloth or something. But there we go. And if you want to put the other two in, you certainly could. So now my SATA power is the cord that's further in, or the connection that's further in. So I'm going to plug it in first, just like that. Then I'm going to plug my SATA data cord in just like that. And these connections are exactly the same for a three and a half inch drive. And then we're gonna plug that guy in to the blue port. And he just popped into place and we're all done. That's how it all looks when it's installed. So now it's just time to fire it up and do the software side of this, which is really not any more trouble than this was. And not that this is likely to happen to you, but if any of you eagle-eyed viewers out there notice that my SATA power connector here on the board was disconnected, yeah, you're gonna wanna plug that back in. If everybody else is just trying to get one of these in here working, ignore that comment. Alrighty, so the next thing to do is just power it up and let it come online, bring windows up to a nice boil. Power it up, I hear our drive spinning, that's all good news. No fire yet, also good news. Alrighty, so we are all booted up and you probably have a temptation to come over here to the file explorer and go check out your new drive. But you're gonna notice it ain't here. It's because we need to initialize it first. To do that, we need to go into disk management and the easiest way to get there for me is just type it in. And hey, you must initialize this disk. You are right. So GPT is fine because it's a two terabyte drive and Windows 10 say okay. So now it's initialized but unallocated. So now we're gonna wanna right click that drive, new simple volume, next. Sounds good to me. Drive E is fine. It's not gonna live in here long enough for me to care. Next, NTFS is fine with me. New volume is fine with me as a name. You can change that to anything you want. Quick format is fine with me. Finish. This will normally just take a couple seconds, and it did. We can see new volume online. Close disk management. And there's our new drive. It is completely normal, by the way, for a two terabyte drive to come in at like 1.8. That's just because of the way drive manufacturers market the size of the drives versus the way the OS interprets the size. It's been like that for probably 40 years. So totally normal to see that. We are online, healthy partition, all good. That's really all there is to the job. 
And I'm just going to leave mine in the nude for right now because it's just a temporary deal for me. But of course you would be wanting to put yours all back together and be good to go with whatever it was you wanted to do. Speaking of what you wanted to do, I appreciate each and every one of you guys stopping in for this video and we will catch you on the next one. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.